Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and built out a little bit of a UI here. It looks something like this. So once we fetch a particular character by their ID, we go ahead and populate some information on the screen and we load in the image dynamically via Picasso. If you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right so you can check it out. And today we are going to introduce the beautiful Kotlin coroutines and couple that with our retrofit implementation. Let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and just build out two separate files here that are just going to help separate some of the code that we have here. We don't want to keep the Moshi and the retrofit instance and even the declaration of this service here inside of our on create of our main activity that's not very scalable. Once we start needing to access the API on different screens and different fragments, we're going to need a general approach to do so. And I'm going to accomplish that now. Okay, so very briefly here we can see that in our main activity we have gone ahead and ripped out the retrofit Moshi and Rick and Morty service declarations here. We clearly have a compile time error. Created this object here called the network layer and this will just act as a location to manage the different components that we need in order to actually go ahead and make network requests. We can go ahead and add a bit more into this uh, as we move forward with maybe interceptors or different converter factories or whatever we need. But in the meantime, this object will work fine. One thing to point out here is the API client object down here that we've gone ahead and created. Inside of our API client, we are passing in the Rick and Morty service. And essentially this is going to be the little interface or I guess the class that we use to interface with our Rick and Morty service here, which in, it, in and of itself is an interface. We'll see why this paradigm is helpful in the future. But for now, let's just roll with it. So one thing we've gone ahead and changed here is we've added the suspend modifier to this function here to allow for Kotlin coroutines. And then we've modified the return type here to instead of being of type call with a parameterized type, we can use response with the parameterized type. Inside of our API client class, we have the Rick and Morty service as part of the constructor. And we have a function here, the suspend function, that basically mimics the function we're going to be calling inside of our service here. So get character by ID, passing in a character ID of type integer, and then we basically just bubble up the same response type and we go ahead and just simply return the information we get back from our Rick and Morty service get character by ID function. This might seem redundant, but there is a reason for this and we will get into that likely in the next episode, but as a little bit of a hint, it has to do with the fact that we've changed this from a call to a response object. That being said, we can go ahead and flip back to our main activity, again, where we have our issue here with the Rick and Morty service. However, one thing that we can do is now access the API client that exists in our network layer object and use that to interact with our API, the Rick and Morty API that sits behind the scenes. So we can simply do so by saying network layer dot API client dot get character by ID. We'll use the same ID here and we can see that this is now starting to condense uh, into one line here as opposed to, you know, a little bit of this NQ and the callback and however long this can get. But we do have an error here and it says the suspend function get character by ID should be called only from a coroutine or another suspend function. So in order to do so, we actually, or in order to use these API calls, we actually need to be within a coroutine context. And this is where our MVVM pattern, the model view view model pattern comes into play. So let's go ahead and explore that. I'm gonna create a class here called the shared view model that is an extension of the Android view model. And inside here, we're going to have a repository named shared or of type shared repository. And we're going to go ahead and create that class as well. And now this is where we can interact with the API. So go ahead and create a suspend function here. Again, get character by ID, passing in a particular character ID. But this function in the repository will return the get character by ID response. 
So we can very easily make a network request here by calling again the network layer API con client get character by ID, passing in the character ID. And then at this point, we can handle what happens when we come back from this network request. So we can say, if the request is successful, then we're going to go ahead and return the request dot body and then otherwise we need to actually handle basically the unsuccessful case or an error case so for right now we're going to go ahead and say return null and update our return type to be nullable and then for right now this will cover the cases so to recap here this line of code is calling a suspend function you could see so by this little icon in the sidebar here that exists inside of our API client to get a character by an ID, which essentially just bubbles up to the Rick and Morty service get character by ID, which we have defined here. Now flipping back to our view model where we have the instance of this repository, we can go ahead and set up our live data so that our activity can listen for the result of the network request abiding by the MVVM pattern. So here we've gone ahead and defined two variables to help us accomplish this MVVM pattern. This underscore character by ID live data is of type mutable live data with a parameterized type of the network response that is private. And then we have another outward facing character by ID live data that is just of type regular live data. And again, our character by ID response. The reason that we have the mutable live data and the regular live data is because we do not want whatever layer is listening to this live data to also have the ability to change it. We just want them to be able to consume the information. So that is namely in the main activity and only inside of the shared view model we should be able to modify the underlying data in the underscore character by ID live data, which of course has the mutable live data type. So we simply created a function here called refresh character where we have our character ID. And then here we can go ahead and make use of the repository. But we do need to get some imports going so that we can use coroutines. And since we are going to launch these coroutines from within a view model to follow best practices with the MVVM architecture, we will go ahead and fetch this dependency here. Go ahead and copy it, flip back over to Android Studio, open up the build.gradle file, paste it in and go ahead and sync now. Once that has gone ahead and synced, we'll just close that file. And then now inside of our Android view model, we now have the view model scope available to us, which is a coroutine scope that we can go ahead and invoke launch on and now we can go ahead and make use of our Kotlin coroutines. So inside of our repository, we have a function here that's going to return our or a nullable network response here. So we can say the response equals our repository dot get character by ID, passing in the character ID. And then very simply, we can post this information to the appropriate live data here. I'm going to go ahead and make this nullable really quickly because the function in our repository returns a nullable response. So we just want to make sure we're handling that. We'll clean this up in a future episode, but for now we're just trying to get things back to the way they were. And now inside of our main activity, we can go ahead and make use of this. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out more or less everything here and go ahead and fetch our view model here like so. So we've gone ahead and defined a view model variable that is of type share view model. We will go ahead and fetch it via the view model provider very simply with this line of code here. Now we can bounce down inside of our on create and say view model dot character by ID live data. We will observe the owner will be this, the activity itself. And then we can go ahead and pass this Lambda function in to basically handle when an event is populated to this live data. It's going to name this variable here, response, and then we can go ahead and do something with it. So we can very easily check if our response is null, then we're basically in an error state. And we're gonna to have to go ahead and handle that. So we'll very easily just copy that toast again. And then otherwise, we paste it in here, and instead of body, it is going to be response and everything should work the same. Now we can go ahead and 
clean this up here by just removing it all. And the last little bit that we need to do is tell our view model here to refresh the character with a particular character ID. Okay, so to recap here, we've gone ahead and uplifted our entire, very small, but our entire architecture at the moment to go from basically no architecture to follow the MVVM pattern. If this is still confusing to you or if that was too much, I will link a card in the top right now where I dive a little bit deeper into what MVVM is, what live data is, and how all this stuff is supposed to work. But the 60 second crash course is exactly what this diagram shows. So we have our view layer here, the activity or fragment, in our case we're using the activity. And we have a view model here that the fragment or activity can see. This view model has a bunch of live data. In our case, we have just one. And then the view model itself has an attachment to the repository class. Our code at the moment directly mimics that with the main activity here having access to a view model, specifically the shared view model. Inside of our shared view model here, we have some live data objects and the accessibility to the repository class. Now the repository class here makes use of our network layer that we've gone ahead and built to actually be kind of the jumping off point from our application to the API and then on the way back as well. That directly mimics again this implementation here where our repository sometimes can get you information from Room, which is Android's onboard SQLite database. If you wanna learn more about that, check out my last season. We went ahead and built an application that used Room to store all the information. And in this season here, we're using the remote data source or we're using an API. And as they even have it here in the diagram, they use retrofit here to go ahead and hit a web service, to hit an API, to hit a backend server, to hit somewhere else that is, doesn't exist on your device to get you the information that you need. Point being, activity or fragment view layer should not have access to the repository, should not have access to the remote data source, or even interact with retrofit. The different layers of this architecture are responsible for different things and this is where we introduce the idea of separation of concerns and where we can really start to modularize our code so that we have the appropriate components doing the appropriate functions. So flipping back to our activity now, when the onCreate runs, when the app basically boots up, we go ahead and tell our view model to refresh the character. We then listen to the outward facing live data object and observe it for any of the changes. We go ahead and handle a little error case here when we get some information to our live data. And then otherwise we also, in the success case here, we update the UI with the information that has been populated for us. So rerunning the application here, activity coming into the foreground and wonderful. Nothing here has really changed. We could benefit from a loading state. I don't know if you saw, but some of this other information that's just hard coded, like this origin or this species text views that act as labels that we don't actually change were populated before the network information came back. But then once we successfully made our network request, we went ahead and updated the UI here all of which happening in a lifecycle aware situation, following the MVVM architecture, implementing Kotlin coroutines with our retrofit implementation to basically bring this app up to speed with the way to perform network operations inside of Android at this moment. Moving forward, there are a few things I wanna clean up here. Namely, the fact that we changed this from a call to a response. I mentioned that earlier in the episode, and the major change there is that we are not really handling when the network call fails for any reason that is outside of our control. If you recall here inside of our callback with the old implementation, we had an on failure and an on success callback. Now the on failure would get invoked when the network request fails, and at the moment we are not handling the situation. So we will actually crash if the network request does not succeed for whatever reason. However, we can very easily clean that up in the next episode, and I think that's where I would like to go, so that we can really just bulletproof ourselves from anything happening, and then from there it will set up a solid foundation for our networking layer, so that any of the requests that we make in the future will all follow this same paradigm of handling when the network request fails for an unknown reason. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like. Subscribe if you are brand new so you don't miss out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.